Hi, I'm Ben Ryan. I'm here today with uh, Hedge Eye Director of Research, Daryl Jones, to go over the some develop, recent developments in the uh, the primary so far. We had a big day yesterday with Mississippi and Michigan. Do you want to just give us a recap to start off with Tuesday's results? Yeah, I'll give you the quick and dirty on Tuesday's results. On the Democratic side, we had, as you mentioned, Michigan and, Mi Michigan and Mississippi. Mississippi was won by Hillary Clinton. Michigan was won by Bernie Sanders, which we're going to touch on in a little more detail. On the Republican side, we had four states, uh, Michigan, Mississippi, Idaho, and Hawaii. Trump, again, uh, leading the way there, won three of the states, and Idaho was won by Ted Cruz. Okay. Uh, and then what do you see that were the surprises versus consensus expectations? Yeah, I think by far and away the biggest surprise was Michigan on the Democratic side. It might ultimately not matter at all, but uh -huh. uh, Bernie Sanders won by a slight margin, about two percentage points. Uh, got all the delegates as a result of that. It was a winner-take-all primary. Going into the primary, Hillary was ahead by about 20 percentage points, so this was really a, a, a surprising move versus what a lot of the polls predicted. And you know what really happened is the, the, the African-American demographic, Bernie did a lot better than people had expected, and that's you know, ultimately what led to his victory there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two things that were surprises, although a little less so, uh, Senator Rubio did pretty poorly overall. He finished either third or fourth in every race. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing was Ted Cruz did better than expected. Yeah. He won a state and uh, and won more delegates than anybody would have expected as well. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on here. How do you think things will play out from here? And then also, what are the next catalysts on the electoral week here? Well, I think the next big catalyst is six days from now. Uh, that's a series of winner-take-all primaries, particularly on the Republican side. Uh, I think there are six states up for grabs, both on the Republican and Democratic side. Uh, the big states as it relates to Republicans is, are Ohio and Florida. Mm -hmm. Ohio obviously is the home state of uh, Governor Kasich. Uh, Florida is obviously the home state of, of uh, Senator Rubio. So those two individuals need to win those states. Uh, if they don't win those states, they're both probably for all intents and purposes out of the, Done. you know, out of it. And they may continue on, but they're certainly not going to get much funding and have a very slim chance of winning. If Donald Trump wins both of those states, uh, mathematically this race is basically finished. You know, he has a really clear path to the nomination at that point. Um, if he doesn't, you know, a lot of things could happen. Sure. All right. Uh, and then based on next week's results, could a contested convention come into play? Yeah, I think, you know, six days from now we'll be able to tell if there's going to be a contested convention. You know, just for a little history, uh, the last time a president was elected president from a contested convention was FDR in 1932, so it hasn't happened that often. The last time a nominee wasn't named going into the election was, I uh, just want to make sure I have this date right, uh, 1984 uh, with Mondale. That was the last time you know, somebody hadn't already been you know, named the, the nominee going into the convention. So this doesn't happen, you know, or cer certainly hasn't happened very uh, very regularly in the last hundred years or so, and again, the last time this happened uh, was 1984. So the last time a president came out of a contested convention was, you know, the 30s. So you know, it's pretty rare, but it could certainly happen, particularly with the backlash, you know, sort of against Trump and the fact that, you know, really Trump is, you know, has about 45 percent of the delegates, but. If he doesn't win these two key states and somebody else does, then he probably won't be able to get the share he needs to get the nomination. Yeah, and then I guess the next thing, just just probably the best thing to do would be to explain how a contested convention works out. And then, you know, yeah, so you know, I think the, the you know the rules have the potential to change, but you know, basically the way it works is, uh, or right now how it would work is, you'd go to the convention, you have your first ballot. Most of the delegates from the states are obligated to you know, to, to vote for the, you know, the proportional split in their state. So they're obligated to stay with whoever they're representing on the first ballot. So you have a ballot. If somebody doesn't have a majority, then you then go to a second ballot. Um, and then you continue balloting until somebody ultimately gets a majority of the delegates. Mm -hmm. And then watching this play out over the next week or so, is, is there any read through for markets or even longer or a longer period of time, depending on who the Republican well, candidate I, is? I, I, mean, I think that there ultimately is a contested uh, convention. There'll be a lot of uncertainty and volatility around that. Um, you know, just to backtrack briefly, you know, the, the issue really is that there could be manipulation of the rules going into the convention. So right now, to be con to be put on the ballot at the convention, you need to win at least eight states. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of talk that that rule could be changed and they could have eight candidates on the ballot going into the convention. You know, that could be perceived by a lot of Americans as a way that, you know, the party elders are you know, really manipulating the presidential race. And I think, you know, that 
has the potential for you know leading to a lack of confidence. So, you know, in my mind, if this thing isn't decided next week, then it probably won't be decided until the convention. And then if you're you know somebody that's investing in the U.S. stock market, that is you know really a catalyst with a lot of uncertainty. And you know I think you know the potential for for people to lose some confidence in the economy and the market because you have this potentially small group of Republicans that could decide who the nominee is. Sure. All right. Thanks, Daryl. Pretty easy, easy to consume. Thanks for joining us.